I, I was surprised at all of the results last night. I, I don't think there's a single race in the state of Washington that, that didn't stun me. I, I, I honestly am not at all sure what the voters had in mind. First of all, I, I'm not surprised that 1033 lost. I mean, a lot of money was put up against it, but I'm surprised by the margin. And uh, because generally people, particularly at a time of a recession, now uh, will vote against higher property taxes. They'll vote for higher for property tax refunds. Um, I think that part of what this illustrates is something that I've sort of suspected for a while, which is that the Republican Party has a uh, horrible death wish in the state of Washington, because they endorsed 1033. The Republican Party had formally endorsed it, and uh, this is uh, probably was not a good idea. I think the reason it lost as big as it did is uh, for the same reason that a lot of conservatives that I know voted against it, because it, it undermines localism. I mean, if you're a real conservative, you believe that the town that you live in or the city that you live in should have the right to order its own affairs. That it's simply wrong on a statewide basis to say that uh, if a given city, that, that the city has to jump through hoops in order to spend more money than an initiative written in stone says, says you can spend. So um, I don't think this is the end of the taxpayer revolt in the state of Washington, particularly if Governor Gregoire goes to an income tax. But uh, the, the, the margin did, did surprise me. I was more surprised by R-71 because um, most conservatives that I know, I mean, I hate to say it, uh, voted for it. They voted to keep the anything but marriage. As, as you probably know, this was a... Um, an issue that deeply divided the conservative community and even the conservative Christian community. I mean, I, I, I really, I mean, most people that I know, most pastors that I know and work with didn't want this on the ballot. They, it just seemed like, okay, the legislature has done this thing and maybe it's not the best idea in the world, but if they stop short of marriage, let's just leave it. And here it is, it's very close. I don't think it's decided yet. And um, the fact, and by the way, R71, have, have there ever been worse political ads in the history of our state <laughs> than the, uh, the anti-domestic um, partner ads that, that were running that were so deceptive and badly executed? And what was the idea that they were thinking of that we're going to use old ladies to, uh, to voice our advertisements? But here it is with this obviously very liberal electorate that we have in the state of Washington. Uh, the thing is a tie, basically. And, and I think combined with the results in Maine, what that really does show is that the American people don't want gay marriage. Duh. Uh, it's now, um, uh, and, and again, R71 is not gay marriage. And, and I know lots of people who voted for it to accept, not to reject, uh, who would never, ever support gay marriage. But still, this, this shows the, uh, the underlying uh, sentiment is, is, is very much stronger than I think many people realize. It's now 34 for 34, uh, when you count Maine, for states that have had uh, same-sex marriage on the ballot. You know, a lot of people have been talking about like the GOP's effort to find a new voice in light of the 2008 election, and this was the first election that people had an opportunity to look at, and we saw some interesting results out of New Jersey, obviously, and mm -hmm. Virginia. Do you think that the GOP has a better has a better grip nationally on what it does than, than in Washington State? I mean, it seems like Washington State's GOP, it sounds like you're saying, are, are, are a little more confused, the way, the way in which they're going about their, their elections here, as opposed to nationally. Well, I, I, I just think that, that the conservative side of things, that the GOP in, in Washington is, in, in fact, confused and demoralized. I mean, we have some fine office holders everybody is proud of and, uh, and, and admiring of, uh, Attorney General McKenna. And uh, we're lucky to have him. And uh, there's been some decent leadership in Olympia recently on, on the Republican side. But I, I, I was stunned uh, by the, the uh, King County executive race because it seemed to me that uh, Susan Hutchison was exactly the kind of candidate that, that those of us, and I certainly include myself in this, who were tired of the... T totally monochromatic, ultra-liberal, democratic governance here locally, exactly the kind of candidate you would want, um, who was really um, p 
putting herself, or at least trying to put herself, beyond partisanship. Uh, she, she had announced, for instance, that she was uh, voting and supporting uh, acceptance of R-71. Uh, she was pro-domestic partnership. Uh, she's a, a tremendously impressive and, and likable person. And uh, she, she obviously, if you look at the results of the primary, I mean, she was well ahead. She, um, and, and again, this would be, this race, that race, would be one of the few indications anywhere in the country in, in this electoral cycle that negative campaigning works because most of the negative campaigning and most of the investment of media bias, things like that, really didn't, didn't work at all. It uh, didn't work for, uh, for, really didn't work for Mayor Bloomberg in New York, who spent $90 million <laughs> and barely survived against a, a no-name opponent. Didn't work for Governor Corzine in New Jersey. Didn't work for Doug Hoffman, the Republican, and not Republican, he was actually a Conservative Party candidate in the 23rd District in New York. But here, the, the negative attacks appear to have worked for Dow Constantine. I'm trying very hard to figure out what happened with the Hutchison race, because it, at the very least, I, I expected it to be close. And then the, the other riddle, and if anyone says that he or she predicted this, um, I think they're lying. <laughs> uh, what is the story on Mike McGinn? I mean... What is that? First of all, um, <laughs> as a conservative Republican, I, I, if I were a voter in the city of Seattle, I mean, I work here every day, but I don't live or vote here, I mean, I certainly would have voted to re-elect Mayor Nichols, who I think was a competent and, and credible leader. Uh, <laughs> the fact that he lost in the, in the primary to these two bozos, and and the the biggest bozo of them all, who was offering what exactly to a major city? Now, I'm I'm certainly hoping that um, when they count the remaining 125,000, for what is that? How, what was it, it? This is 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 ours. I mean, there's so many wonderful things about our our city. But the inability to count ballots is not one of them. I, I mean, especially with a mail-in election, what is wrong with people? Seriously, Microsoft is right here. I mean, wouldn't you think that somebody could work out a means where in a medium-sized city like the city of Seattle, I mean, it's not New York, it's not L.A., you can count the votes for mayor, for God's sake? I mean... And again, I think that the prospects of either of these two gentlemen, or certainly of Mike McGinn, uh, curing some of the epic incompetence, and 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 again, I had thought, and as this was true of virtually everyone I spoke to, I mean, uh, the one thing that that I would have hoped that Seattle voters would say would be, "Build the damn tunnel already and be done with it." I mean, come on. This is this is why, like I said, it recalls that monorail stuff. That that way. people outside the city of Seattle still don't believe it when I talk about it. That it, it took five different elections and a waste of two hundred million dollars in planning and propaganda and bureaucracy before they killed this idiot thing. 